Welcome everyone to um, Wiki Africa Heritage, the first session. Uh, I'm very excited and honored to be here today. Um, and I want to thank Tasneem uh, for driving this as, um, the, as a person who really, really wants to get um, involved in this sector and sees, who sees the benefits of, um, of working with Wikimedia and Wikipedia um, on Wikipedia and with Wikimedia uh, community in order to, to bring um, them together and to, to share the kind of the benefits that amongst your community and amongst your education uh, programs. So the idea is to have a boost uh, with that. Uh, it's a collaboration with uh, Simonstown Museum um, and hopefully it will develop the, and support Cape Town's heritage sector. So um, I'm just gonna introduce you basically to the idea of what this is. And um, at some stage, I'd like to you to also share who you are. Um, and um, there's a bit of a practical thing at the, at the end. So I just want to, this session is not a huge, uh, it just share, tells you a little bit about uh, Wikimedia, about Wikipedia, about uh, where this, project itself sits within this massive organization and this massive um, global project and um, and how it will benefit you guys uh, in ultimately. So who am I? I'm Isla Haddo Flood. I live in Simonstown, um, which is not surprising <laughs> given the collaboration. Uh, I am Zimbabwean, uh, but um, have been in Cape Town for nearly 20 years. Um, I have been working with the uh, in the open movement since 2011, so nearly 10 years now. Um, and I travel all over the world um, to activate Africa, Africa's knowledge onto Wikipedia. I started with uh, Share Your Knowledge for Wiki Africa, and essentially I've been doing this kind of glam work, but in different sectors. And I'll speak about what glam is just now. Um, but in different sectors. So I've um, developed uh, Wiki Africa, which is a movement which is about getting Africa's knowledge onto Wikipedia and sharing it, using that as a platform to share it with the world. And I'm a co-founder and co-lead of Wiki in Africa and many of, of other Wikimedia initiatives. So um, there's an NGO that's set in, Wiki, in, in, in South Africa called Wiki in Africa and uh, we do a whole host of projects, but I'm also involved in a lot of Wikimedia initiatives that are global. Uh, I'm an open knowledge and culture, open culture ambassador, and I, my day job is director of communications at Open Education Global, as well as co-lead of Wiki in Africa. There's a lot of wikis, so you just have to be aware that um, it does get confusing. I started my journey into Wikimedia sharing with heritage, basically running a um, project in Africa, across Africa with called Share Your Knowledge. Um, and it was working with heritage and memory institutions to get their knowledge onto Wikipedia. Um, the lofty goal was 30,000 um, contributions from Africa and it far exceeded that in the end. But we also worked with a hundred over a hundred uh, institutions across Africa from the north to the south and east to west. Um, and we realized part of that part of this journey with uh, Share Your Knowledge is that we realized that this project Share Your Knowledge was very defined in how it, you went about as a memory institution or as a heritage professional to share your knowledge. And it wasn't always possible for people in that, that space to do that because they didn't have the resources, they didn't have maybe the, the collections were not digitized, they didn't have the capacity, they, there was a whole range of different elements that weren't um, possible for them. And so this is part of why I want to do this, this um, series with you is about how we collectively and collaboratively develop programs that are suitable for your situation 
with the support that we can have from me and from my team, as well as from a much larger Wikimedia community. So instead of pushing some assumptions and some ideals onto you, I would rather that this whole program be much more collaborative and, and much more kind of supportive of what you need rather than what we feel you should do. Because what works in Europe or somewhere else doesn't always work here, as we know. So um, that having said, uh, Wiki in Africa, which is the organization that I, I co-lead and run a whole load of projects through. So not only are we doing this, which is Wiki Africa Heritage, where also we also run education programs. We have a gender equity project, which is um, Wiki Loves Women. We have a technology we, in order to, um, to uh, go past a lot of, or get past a lot of the um, issues that we all face, which is um, things like access to uh, data, how expensive data can be, or just access to the internet, just generally, um, or something like power. <laughs> like there was a load shedding warning recently, we um, experienced it. So uh, how can we circumnavigate that? So we've developed some tools to do that. We also have Wiki Loves Africa, which is another heritage and culture um, space, which is about celebrating Africa visually using um, photography and media uh, to, to illustrate articles on Wikipedia. Uh, it's an annual, it's one of the largest annual um, photography contests in, the, in, South, in Africa. Um, and accompanying that, we also have uh, photographic training sessions, which we just started in Cameroon. So we are all over Africa. This is what we do. Um, and so we have both education programs and training programs and heritage programs. And as you can see on the diagram, um, Wiki Africa Heritage sits between education and open culture. And it's also about drawing in a Wikimedia community as well and being able to create collaborations and partnerships. So first of all, I want to put into context, um, why, why is it important that to Africa and why should it be important to African communities and African organizations, Africa-based communities and organizations? Um, why is a collaboration with Wikipedia important? So this is a map of the world. Every single um, yellow dot or gold dot is a geographically um, situated article from Wikipedia. So it means that that article is about something specific to that geographical space. So it could be a monument, it could be a building, it could be a person who lives in a very specific area. Um, and as you can see, there are more, as it says, there are more Wikipedia articles within that circle, the red circle, than there are across the whole of the world. And you can see the distribution of dots South Africa and obviously around Cape Town is not, is not bad. It's not ne nearly as dense as the one that's in the circle, but you can see that Africa is not particularly well represented. And this happens across different sections. So there are more articles about uh, Antarctica than there are about the whole of Africa. There are more articles about uh, Middle Earth, which is part of the Tolkien series, then there are about entire countries in Africa. There are, um, and a lot of this has to do with the, who writes Wikipedia. So the majority of people who write Wikipedia come from um, the global, so-called global north or developing countries such as North America and um, countries in North America and Europe. And the part of that is to do with access. Part of that is to do with, um, privilege and power, the power of the, the uneven geographies of knowledge and uh, power to do with how much access people have, the resources they have, all of those elements. Um, similarly, there's more geotagged entries about France than the African continent. And why, 
why this is important is because it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So um, who is connected where? Basically, there are 53% of all people are online. Um, so the access to internet is growing. But when over half a billion African adults or people below 18 look at Wikipedia, the big spaces or anything really on the internet, who do they see? They don't see very much about themselves. We don't see very much about our reality. Um, it's like we're almost forgotten. And um, the, the access to the internet is quite low, it's rising. So 29% of people in Africa have access to the internet, but 40% of the youth, and youth is categorized as 15 to 24 year olds. So there is that capacity for people to access the internet and to get information, their information and their knowledge from the internet. But what are they reading? What are they finding there? And if you don't find, if you don't see yourself reflected, you're very, very unlikely, unless you have a certain personality type, to contribute and make sure that your experiences and your um, your your realities are being reflected. So this is part of what we do: is about making sure and facilitating people that people understand what the, the consequences of this are, um, and we can never decolonize. <laughs> And ourselves and we can never decolonize our countries and knowledge if we don't contribute ourselves, if we don't encourage other people to have the confidence and give themselves the permission to do uh, to contribute. We have the support of um, a whole range of, of organizations, international organizations who just support this. Uh, Tasneem, it says that the free meeting will end. Um, no, you have you have nine minutes and forty four seconds. So maybe what you can do is do the the theoretical part now, and then everybody can join once the meeting closes. Okay, we can do the practical using right. the same link. I will go quickly then. All yeah. right, and then you do the practical part. So just use the same exactly the same link that you used to join um, for the second part of the of the talk. Okay, so essentially UNESCO supports. Um, open education, which is part of what this is. Um, and sorry, just to get back onto the slides. Um, I wanted to share with you the share your knowledge, but I will share this whole slide project with you. And so you can uh, go onto the links, you can find out more. Um, and because of the time situation, we're not gonna watch the, the movie. Um, yeah, so wiki projects um, support heritage and memory and that this um, are glam. So as I said earlier, uh, galleries, libraries, archives and museums are part of the process. Um, and they've been lumped together under this, which is galleries, libraries, archives and museums. But we are also aware that within this, there are a whole range of different organizations uh, that support these groups. So there are memory institutions, there are community organizations that are passionate about um, their voices being heard. There are also uh, community groups that uh, support the work of, um, of museums. There are heritage, other heritage sector. So it's not, we understand that it's not just this space. So Wiki Africa Heritage, what will we be doing? Essentially, um, the main goals are to develop a slow, manageable, collaborative, consultative and supportive program with heritage and memory uh, professionals and enthusiasts to introduce and facilitate the integration of Wikipedia and open movement practices into the heritage sector in Cape Town. So the idea is that we will work together. I will provide information and knowledge that will help you to develop programs within your organizations and within your communities that will help to release information that already exists onto Wikipedia so that there is that people see themselves and are more likely to contribute and then they have their ability, their um, pride in their own identity and their own community and they share that with the world. Um, we will provide knowledge, 
theoretical information, but also practical applications. So we will be working as we go um, in order to develop alternatives for your community and for education programs that you already run or wish to run. We want to inform and assist you how you work um, and put skills and knowledge into action in the form of you will be looking at content and expanding content and hopefully creating um, directly onto Wikipedia yourselves. And Wikipedia is not just Wikipedia, I'll speak about it just now, but it also Wikidata, Wikicommons. Um, and you'll also develop a realistic community and education interventions that are adaptable to your space, to your unique situation. Um, in the process, we want to build a nurturing and self-sustaining and supportive local and then hopefully regional network that helps and supports each other. And I want you to know, no pressure, that um, this is a model that we are building for the rest of Africa. So we are hoping that what we do here will provide guidelines and um, safe places for heritage experts across Africa to work with Wikimedia communities in order to do what we hope can be achieved here. Okay. So um, the main elements of a collaborative and consultative program are knowledge transfer, skills acquisition, content creation, and program development. We start today, <laughs> so welcome. Um, but we're hoping that it will be something that will continue. This formal program will hopefully continue until the end of the year with your own program carrying on into 2022. So we want, but we want these sessions to evolve from something that's particularly informative to then you guys own these sessions in that um, you will ask like for help, like do you need to have a lesson on uh, Wikidata or do you need to how to update or upload and also to continue this community um, into supporting itself. We are also looking at, um, as we get deeper into the program of approaching other GLAM institutions around the world who have already worked in this situation. And once you know what kind of uh, program you want to run, who have done something similar to act as mentors as well. So it could be um, at a museum in, in New York, or it could be at a library in um, Douala, we don't know. So, um, but that's something that we're going to develop as it happens. And you can see, so the, so initially, so um, in May, we're in, introduced to this program. Um, how to use Wikipedia will be next month. Why GLAMS and Wikipedia uh, with case studies, which gives you an idea. Um, and then how to use Wikipedia, Wikimedia, what to offer in education for August. And then September, October, November, and further on are things that we can decide together where your priorities lie. So I have a whole range of different things that I think would be um, perfect for you, but I, I want you to also determine how this information runs. And so I'll give you a whole range of options and you can decide what priorities. The idea is to develop initial ideas for community and um, education program, to identify and approach local partners, um, and then to refine those partners, uh, programs and partners from November until January, and then hopefully to start those programs for 2022. So the whole idea is to have a very slow program, a very slow build up to a practical intervention within your communities or within your organization or to as an addition to something that you already, or an, yeah, an addition to something that you're already doing. So getting started, Wikipedia is just one part of a much bigger movement, which is Wikimedia, uh, Wikimedia movement, but it has certain projects. So the Wikimedia movement itself is a huge community of uh, most of almost certainly all volunteers. Um, and uh, many of those are organized into projects um, or chapters 
or support structures um, that develop. And one of those is Wiki in Africa, but there is Wikimedia South Africa, which is a chapter. There are user groups across Africa, which is kind of like the step below um, a chapter. It's less formalized and it's not as it's not a legal organization, whereas Wikimedia South Africa is legal, is a, a recognized, locally recognized organization. And there are a whole range of thematic and other groups and different things. So um, there's Wikimedia, uh, there's Wikipedia, there's Wiktionary, which is a, di a dictionary, there's Wikiquote, there's Wikibooks. There's a whole range of elements here which we can get involved in. Um, the ones that normally um, play part in the, in, um, the GLAM sector is Wikidata because that's about making sure that all of the data specific data, like it could be geo specific, it could be making sure that the right uh, name of the museum, all of those elements are correct because then they can be um, shared, the right information can be shared across all of the projects. Uh, Wiki source is very good because it's about making sure that the um, that the original, so if you go onto wiki source, you can find the original speeches of Mandela or um, Desmond Tutu or um, some other, other people. So there's a whole range of kind of like, so to make sure that the uh, information is correct. Um, and Wikimedia Commons is where um, it's the media repository. So it's basically like the big, huge library of all of the images and video and um, PDFs and all of those files that happen there. So if you want to have an art, if you want to illustrate an article, you upload a photograph to Wikimedia Commons and then you import it into Wikipedia. Um, and then there's the foundation. So the foundation is the organization that basically pays for the servers to keep going. They also get money in to support the community itself. And we'll go into a bit more detail of that um, in the next session. I don't want to get too bogged down by what, what is basically a behemoth <laughs> project. So Wikipedia is free, as in what people hope beer is, but isn't. Um, it's also free as in speech, what speech should be. Um, and it's created and refined entirely by volunteers. It's run by the nonprofit uh, Wikimedia Foundation. But it, I think being the word run is not a great word to use because essentially um, it's supported by, they make no editorial, um, the Wikimedia Fo Foundation is not allowed by the community to make any editorial decisions. So they, uh, the community runs the content and they basically keep the lights on. The foundation keeps the lights on and helps the community to do that. Uh, all the edits and versions are all recorded indefinitely. If you mess up, you can, everything can go back. You can, it can be undone. Uh, so there's no breaking Wikipedia. <laughs> you will not break it. Um, so do not worry about it. There are just in English alone, there are 6.299 uh, million articles just in English. There are billions of, well, millions of articles across all of the different um, projects. And there are 321 languages just in Wikipedia. All the other projects have different languages as well. Um, some of them, not as many. So you'll see. So from, um, this is the power of Wikipedia. Uh, I also have a different slide, which I haven't included of um, Afrikaans, and we'll do that a little bit. So all of the South African languages, the official languages are also on. Afrikaans is one of the stronger of the African languages across Africa. So, but just to give you an example of the power of Wikipedia, this is this month's overview of how many people read and where they read it. So, um, the total page views for this month alone in April, well, for April were 10 billion people, 10 billion people or 10 billion pages were viewed. Um, there were 108,000 new, new uh, registered users. Uh, there were 824 million unique devices used. So there were basically about 824 million people reading 10 billion articles, essentially. 
Um, there were 6 million edits made in March and the active amount of editors are 46,000. So those are the people who are actively editing at the moment. You will be joining those people. Um, so, and the amount of edited pages that have happened in, that happened in March were 2 million. So you can see it's a big, vibrant community. Edits happen all the time. There are people patrolling, doing different. It's a little bit like um, a small, um, it's like a, a small country, basically. People have different tasks and they have different jobs and they all do, they don't just edit, they create bots, they organize groups, they do all sorts of different things. Within writing Wikipedia, the content of Wikipedia has five core policies. So they're called the pillars of Wikipedia. Um, and these are the neutral point of view. So when you write an article, it must be neutral. You must not be sta standing on one point or another. You know, you must not take sides. You must present the whole story, not just one side of it. Uh, verifiability, there must be um, there must be examples of where somebody has said, yes, this is absolutely the truth, or is this is as close to the version of the truth as possible. So uh, citing sources, making sure that the sources are fairly reliable, those are all really important. And they are very important in one way, but they are also very, very difficult for, Wiki for um, African for African contributors to come across because there is not as much information about, um, there's either not as much information about certain ideas. Might be a question. Okay. Solani? Has so someone good. got a question? Solani? Oh no. <laughs> so, we join. So, as far as the, um, the, the research is so as far as citations is concerned there's because of oral history there's sometimes it's very difficult to get oral histories onto wikipedia and it, it goes to the second the third thing and also because of how um, of colonialism and how people's uh, perspectives have been cast in a certain light it also is a problem because that has sometimes has to be reviewed or renewed or changed and it that what was once perceived as a truth is no longer a truth for certain sectors of people. So how I, ex an example of this is say, uh, how people used to view, um, how colonialists viewed Shaka Zulu, how the Zulu people viewed Shaka Zulu, and then how people like say the Shangan or the Ndebele viewed, that it goes back to the neutral point of view, but, the information about Shaka Zulu only really came from the colonialists. It didn't, wasn't necessarily recorded from the other communities. So that's what I mean about both neutrality, but also about having sources that we can, that provide the full story, just not one side of it. And then uh, no original research. But so basically you can't say I interviewed some somebody and this is the recording of the interview and that goes on. It has to be via a notable institution or organization. And that's why working with heritage organizations and um, communities, having communities working with those heritage organizations allow that filter to happen. Um, assume good faith. So always, even no matter how grumpy you are, assume that other people aren't doing things just to irritate you, that they have a reason for the decisions they make on, on the in the community and also try to avoid a conflict of interest. So that's about like writing an article about somebody you know personally, like your, um, or writing about an institution. So this comes up now when we we're working with partnering. So if you are a member of an institution, you, you're not really meant to write about it, but if you're a member of a heritage institution, you are because you're reflecting the collection, not the institution. So, um, which is a different aspect. And if you you must always say who you are. So if you're writing an article about say, your, your museum or your organization, you should say, I am, uh, I am an, an employee of this organization, but this information is cited by something outside of this 
the organization's kind of um, documentation. There are simple rules. You have to have a, a you have to register an account. You should learn the five pillars, which we've just discussed. Be bold. So don't you don't need permission. Be bold, but not silly. <laughs> you know, do it like with conviction, uh, and have the courage of those convictions. Know your audience. Basically, is basic. It's the world, but also know that they need like factual information. Don't infringe copyright. We're going to talk about copyright. It's a very important part of this. Citations are very important in this, this, this section, uh, and especially with writing articles. Um, don't, don't promote. So don't be, uh, if you're talking about somebody or you're writing an article about somebody or an institution, don't use fluffy like promotional language, like they are the most awesome or they are brilliant award-winning people. It just needs, they are people, they do this, they have done this. Um, rule eight is about making sure that you collaborate with others and share. Uh, don't hold it in, <laughs> do what we all do and make sure that um, you bring on the next generation. And if you are in a dispute, try and learn from that experience. Don't get grumpy. Um, and yeah, the rest are all part of this. I will share this uh, this aspect so that you can see, uh, you can explore the policies and guidelines for yourself. So getting started. Uh, first of all, does anyone have any questions of me and this process? And uh, I didn't actually speak about how how many. So what I thought we could do is we could meet once a month when when it uh, suits you guys. And then if we want to do a practical, we can organize like a practical meeting, you know, um, an extra practical meeting if you want to actually meet in or go through a, yes, Tasneem. Um, and this is a suggestion to everybody. Um, I know it's a small group at the moment, but I suspect it will grow as more people become more interested. So I do want to suggest that perhaps we should maybe every second month um, meet at a different site. So go to the Salt River Heritage Society and do a wiki session there. I don't know how Lufti feels about that. Or going to a library in Salt River or Cape Town or one of the museums and, and actually do a wiki session together. And then people can just be zoomed in when need be. Um, from the Salt River, we don't have a library in Salt River and we don't have you a could place. Do, so what we could do, and that's what I'm suggesting, I don't know if we want to remain, like have one, have the kind of information session stay static, but we could also have like an additional, so we could do a photo walk of Salt River and take photographs of Salt River heritage sites, you know which it would be another way, like a practical way of doing that. And it would show how we could organize, other or groups could organize around their own self. Um, we could do, and then we could go to a collection. We could go through um, somebody who does have a collection that we could go through. We could go through that or somebody like, uh, say the um, museum, um, the Cape Medical Museum, we could go through their um, the archive of their photographs and we could show how to upload the photographs so we could have practical yeah. sessions separate to a kind of a theoretical I'm not mm. sure I mean this is basically how this is your program so you must share how you wish wish it to do I think the first three maybe so we're all up to a certain speed mm. can and then we can decide after that how we want to run it I don't would that make sense Totally. I think I really like that idea of, of, a, of a photo walk and collections because, I mean, Salt River is also a very historic place. So we Simon's Town, we have collections, we have a stoop. So these are all the resources that we do have. So I think it's a, I think it's a nice way of getting other people who wouldn't necessarily join a Zoom meeting to actually be exposed to yeah. what Wikipedia actually, you know, offers. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's let's keep talking about that, but uh, let's just do on the, the first the first say two or three sessions so that everyone's up yeah. to uh, up to to because in the next two sessions I want to kind of introduce 
um, what kind of uh, what kind of projects have already happened so you can have ideas about what um, practical stuff we could do. And then so you're going to share this with us. Um, maybe I should just start the Google folder for everybody to access um, and go through. Yeah. Yeah, so let's start that with session one with this this um, thing. Does anyone have any questions or any anything you want to add? Please feel free to this is meant to be collaborative, so I don't want to hear my voice all the time. <laughs> Look, I, I think it's not, I think it's good. Uh, you know, um, the the problem with like uh, with uh, the information and the 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 sources of information, um, it's, it's, it's very difficult from our perspective because like most of the, the sources that we rely on is, is from the colonialist perspective. Mm. Uh, so, you know, that, that, that becomes, a, 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 you know, a problem. And then um, in Salt River, the oral history tradition is quite rich. So uh, most of the interviews that we do is like um, uh, from the oral, history uh, kind of tradition uh, but I see Wikipedia doesn't um, um, use oral history as much. Yeah so there are to answer the, the oral history thing and I think we should do a session about oral, oral history and how you record community voices and how we can then use different platforms in order to bring those voices onto Wikipedia or how how they are brought on. Um, I think it just means we start a bit further back, but I do know that there are actually some really important oral history um, uh, projects that have happened on Wikipedia. And I want to bring in some of the people who've worked on those projects so far, so that it gives you a whole lot of ideas. Um, I'm, I'm not the expert of everything. I would be a superhero if I actually knew every aspect of Wikipedia, but I definitely know who to ask in order to bring them in. So I think, and for us to find, maybe there's a way that we can find a way um, of circumventing the, the oral history issue um, on, and the first person kind of, um, the first research, you know, stage. Um, so I think that there's a way, it also could be that um, we could create a different, um, a separate site. I don't know how you record, Lufti, I'm not sure how you record your oral histories. Like, is it on a, is it on a website that's accessible? Are they? Um... Yes, that, that is our idea. We, we um, at the moment, we just upload like to, to a YouTube, our YouTube channel and uh, for example, you'll find that uh, we interviewed the oldest resident in Salt River. She's 107 years old. Wow. Uh, she was born on Freedom Day, 27th April. So we did an interview with her and uh, uh, that was last year. Uh, this year we couldn't because she's too frail. But I mean, um, that's been uploaded so that that's like a document yeah so i think there's there, there might be ways that we can we can do that so i think that's definitely something that i i will talk to people about like how how can we do that how can we get um that um experienced knowledge onto onto wikipedia the other question that i wanted to ask you is that how do how can we also use wikipedia to document the the intangible cultural uh, heritage of of our community yeah, so I think that's also, I think what we need to do is look at, so I think there are certain things that Wikipedia is very good for, and I think there are some things that Wikipedia just isn't. So, but I think there are elements within, like, so Wikibooks, you can create a book, say, about intangible heritage on, um, in Salt River, and create a book on Wikibooks, and then that can be used as a source for, because it's a different audience, you know? So, um, and then from that, you can create an article about intangible, uh, intangible culture, which I think is fascinating, which is fascinating. And I think a lot of people would be very, very interested. But if you have a wiki book that make that kind of like structures it, then it can be summarized in an article because for everyone to understand that, um, that a, and we'll get into this next session, but everyone should understand that a Wikipedia article basically is 
a summary of a much bigger, much more detailed kind of subject. So each article basically distills the essence of a subject, um, but it can't cover everything, you know? So I think that's, that's so um, if it leads to a bigger discussion or if it can bring, pull in or um, summarize a much bigger uh, conversation that's been having or a presentation that's happened on, on Wiki, books, then I think that's definitely something that can be done. For example, we, we're, doing, we're doing like writing up the history of all the educational institutions in our, Brilliant. In our community. Okay. We're writing up the history of all the um, sports clubs in our, in our community. That's wonderful. I think, and and those are those those kind of uh, institutions are perfect articles to have on Wikipedia. Um, so let me, and we can talk about that, I think, maybe the next time when we talk about the anatomy of an article, and we can talk about how um, we can use local articles or other community examples to show. And so let's just get into the practical, because I'm a bit worried about time. How much time has people got, have people got? Um, this is a new session, but we have one minute left, technically, because we said it's <laughs> only left until 12. We're but getting up to 12 o'clock. Is it, are people able to continue or do you want to do? Because I can set you as, I can set you homework. So, okay. All right. How many people have uh, registered their Wiki accounts? Okay. I, I can't see anybody else. So, um, let's see. I think everybody else is now hiding away because they're hiding. <laughs> yeah. So what I want you to do um, is if you need help uh, to let me know, Tasneem, you, have you created a, uh, a WhatsApp group? Yes, I've, um, I've shared the link in the group now. Okay. All right. So um, I'm not sure. Am I on that? Uh, I'm not sure, but I can add you. I'll send you the link as well. Yeah. So you, you can send it to whoever... Mm. So what, okay, so what I want to do is, I want you, the homework that I want you to do, okay, is I want you to go onto Wikipedia and I want to find you to find an article that exists about your community, about your organization, uh, or about a specific interest that reflects you, okay? And then I want you to find three or four articles that us that reflects similar something similar, but in a um, in either North America or in Europe or in so say take Simon's Town. You want to look at um, if you're just taking the the article that's about Simon's Town. You want to look at say an article that is about another similar port um, port village or a naval base you know, village in uh, around the world. So it could be Chatham, say in England, but it also could be um, somewhere in Nova Scotia, or it could be, you, you know, so you have the, so you have an article that's very similar. So if you, if you're looking for, um, if you're looking, if you work, live in a, a high density suburb, you could look at an article of yourself, uh, of that, say, Googletu, and then you could also compare it to an article of, um, of Soweto, or you can also compare it to an article of another high density suburb somewhere else in the world, so that you can see how those articles are constructed, but you can also see like the difference, like what's missing, you know, what hasn't been included. So like, um, yeah, so what I want you to, to look at are, what exists on Wikipedia about your interest and your or your community, whichever one you choose, it's up to you. I want you to see if you can find the page views about like who is looking at that article, who's looking at who at um, how many people, how busy is it? And then I want you to think about what it should look like. What do you think it should look like? So look at other communities, two to three other different articles, similar about a similar subject about a similar community, um, but in different spaces that are better resourced, okay?
And your homework basically is to make a list of what you think needs to be added. So bullet points, and then you can present that to us. So it will give us an insight into a, who you are and what your interest is. Um, and also Tasneem has a, um, a survey that I think she wants to, to share with you. So it gives us a better understanding of uh, what you guys are looking forward to in this program. Right. Yeah. I'm just busy typing what you're saying. I've added you to the group. So oh, um, I can just copy and paste. something and you can just... <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to <laughs> type it <laughs> um no, it's for me so that i don't forget okay so guys uh thank you so much for joining us today i really hope that you will be uh inspired and excited mm. to come forward and be part of this so i really want to have like a practical part element to it so that you can see the changes that you you yourself are making to Wikipedia and then the changes your community will make as part of this program. So I'm really excited to get this, this working. And the point is to make sure that it works for you um, and for your organization. So if you're coming, if you are coming across any challenges, we can workshop them together. If you have certain issues, we can work those together as well. All right. Um, I think from all of us, Ida, thank you. Um, hopefully we can start recruiting more people as we go along. There are people that can't make it. So I normally send them the recordings. So um, I think that's also a good way just to keep on distributing the, the recordings to yeah. um, your networks. All right. So thank you, everyone. Thanks so much. It's so exciting to get started on this. Yeah. I'm looking right. forward to the photo walks and the other things. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Have a nice day, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.